Tonight the talk is on meditation. Now, meditation is something that nowadays a lot of people are interested in. Eh? Now, this uh, the purpose of meditation. There are many aims of meditation. For a lot of people uh, in the West, eh, it is for body health and also for mental health. Eh? And meditation happens to the to be the best uh, anti-stress medicine. So a lot of uh, executives in the West, uh, they are not taking it for religious purpose, just for the stress uh, to relieve their stress. So they practice meditation. But mo- Buddhist meditation, the aim is slightly different. Buddhist meditation uh, is for the purpose of seeing things as they really are. Pali is yata, bhuta, jnana, dasana. Uh, and we want, we want to see things as they really are, so that will give us full understanding or knowing. And that will lead to letting go. Now seeing things as they really are, and understanding or knowing uh, is what is called in Pali, Jnana, Dasana, seeing and knowing. Uh, and that is another word for wisdom. And the purpose of wisdom is for letting go, uh, relinquishing, uh, letting go of our attachments which give us suffering. And so you can see, uh, if a person really has wisdom, then uh, that person will let go uh, of his or her attachments. That is why it is uh, quite normal uh, for people uh, to prefer monks to give a Dharma talk uh, than a lay person to give a Dharma talk, because a monk is a renunciant, so they have more faith in a monk. Now why is it that we don't see things as they really are? In the suttas, the Buddha talked about five hindrances. There are five things uh, that cover us and make us not see things as they really are. And these five things, uh, they act like uh, dark glasses, sunglasses covering our eyes. When we are wearing sunglasses uh, and we look at things, uh, the color uh, is slightly different. When we are wearing the dark glasses, we see what appears to us not what uh, they really are. So when you're wearing dark glasses, you look at a certain color, eh? you swear it's a certain color. But somebody else without dark glasses may see it differently. Then one day or later when you take off the dark glasses, and then you look at the that, that thing again, the color appears different to you. Uh, in the same way, uh, these five hindrances uh, obstruct us uh, from seeing things as they really are. And what are these five hindrances? There are five things, uh, the Buddha said. Uh, the first one is sensual desire. Sensual desire. I think everybody knows that. Uh, the desire to see, to hear, uh, to uh, smell, taste, touch, uh, and to think. Uh, so sensual desire uh, is the first one. The second one is ill will, ill will or anger. And the third one is loss and topper, uh, which means uh, being lazy and muddle-headed, uh, as they say. And the fourth is uh, restlessness and worry. And the fifth is doubt. When these uh, five things cover us, uh, we don't see clearly. And the Buddha gave a simile uh, of trying to see, uh, say like a a basin of water, trying to see clearly uh, through the water to see what is at the bottom of the water. If the water is bubbling uh, or if the water is muddy, uh, you cannot see things clearly. Or if you have things covering the surface of the water, eh? you cannot see things clearly. These are all similes for the hindrances. Now the only way eh, 
that we can abandon the hindrances uh, and see things clearly uh, is by concentration, samadhi. In several suttas, uh, uh, discourses of the Buddha, the Buddha said, the condition for seeing things as they really are is samadhi. When we have samadhi, uh, then the, the five hindrances reduce, the level uh, of the five hindrances come down. But this is called abandoning the five hindrances. But abandoning the five hindrances, uh, there are several levels corresponding to the different levels of concentration or samadhi, concentration of mind. Uh. The first one is you don't even have to meditate. If you are reading a book uh, and you concentrate on reading the book, then uh, uh, you have a certain degree of concentration. Uh. And in one sutta, in the Sangyutta Nikaya, the Buddha said, when one listens to the Dhamma attentively, uh, the five hindrances exist not, and the seven bojanga factors of enlightenment uh, are complete. It's very interesting, the Buddha said, when you listen to the Dhamma attentively, eh, either through the ear as you are doing now, or when you are reading a book, eh, if you pay full attention, eh, at that time the five hindrances exist not. But then, as I said, eh, there are many levels, so the five hindrances exist not uh, to a certain degree only. And this will enable you uh, to attain understanding of the Dhamma and become a first stage Arya, first fruition Arya, Sotapanna. And this type of concentration can also be called momentary concentration. Uh, it is not perfect concentration, but it is enough uh, to give you an understanding of the Dhamma. That is why you find in the suttas, uh, Many, many times uh, people came to listen to the Dhamma taught by the Buddha for the first time uh, and after that the Buddha said they had become Sotapanna, Arya, first stage Arya. So if you are aiming just for first stage Arya, you don't even have to meditate. You just have to read the suttas more, again and again read the suttas uh, until you get some understanding. And a Sotapanna destroys three factors. Uh. Now if your concentration is slightly higher, medium level concentration, that will lead you to attain Sagatagami, the second stage Arya. Both of these, uh, Sotapanna and Sagatagami, they have perfect sila. Perfect sila in the Aryan Eightfold Path uh, means perfect speech, perfect action, perfect livelihood. Uh, these are the three things uh, in the Aryan Eightfold Path. Uh. Now, uh, Asaka Dagamin uh, has destroyed three factors and has weakened two and ill will. So if a person meditates uh, to a medium level of concentration, this sensual uh, lust uh, and anger uh, would reduce. So if you meditate uh, and you meditate, uh, you practice concentration meditation, that means samatha meditation, and if you attain this medium level of concentration, uh, uh, it becomes evident, evident to you uh, because you will notice uh, your anger goes down very, very much. And also your sensual desire, your sensual lust also goes down very, very much. For a person who has not reduced you know, attenuated lust, eh, that person tends to think lustful thoughts every day. Eh, and not only every day, several times a day, many times a day, that person will be disturbed by lustful thoughts. But if you have attained this medium level of concentration, you will notice eh, that you don't think of sensual thoughts every day. Eh. And also your anger, eh, is noticeably reduced and sometimes people around you also notice that. Nah? So when that happens, nah, then you know you have a medium level of concentration. And if you have been practicing the Dhamma for some time, then nah, you may uh, 
have the a little bit of confidence that you might be a Sakadagamin. Eh? Now, the third level of concentration eh, is perfect concentration, Sama Samadhi. And Sama Samadhi in the suttas eh, is always given two definitions. One is one pointedness of mind, which is any jhana. Jhana is a Pali word eh, meaning a state eh, of mental incandescence and the mind eh, becomes to be bright. Jhana literally means a fire or the uh, brightness eh, of a fire. So uh, I interpret jhana eh, to be a state eh, of mental incandescence eh, when a person attains one pointedness of mind, eh, a kind of brightness eh, wells up from within eh, uh, and that is the state of jhana. So if a person attains jhana, he has a chance of becoming an anagami or an arahan. According to the sutta, an anagami has perfect sila and perfect samadhi. And an arahan has perfect sila, perfect samadhi and perfect panya. In other words, sila is moral conduct, samadhi is concentration of mind, panya is wisdom. Ah. So you can see eh, from the sutta that to become an anagamin eh, or an arahan, eh, you need perfect samadhi, which means one pointedness of mind, any jhana or the four jhanas. Eh. The uh, perfect concentration uh, in the suttas is always described as one pointedness of mind or the four jhanas. And to uh, make the point uh, that an anagami or an arahan needs the jhanas, uh, there is one sutta, Majjhima Nikaya number 64, where it is stated uh, that there is a path leading to the destruction of the five lower fetters without following it, which uh, it is impossible to destroy the five lower fetters. When the five lower fetters are destroyed, uh, a person becomes an anagami, third stage Arya. So here the Sutta is saying uh, <coughs> that there is a path uh, leading to anagami. And if you don't follow this path, it is impossible to become an anagami. And later on, the Sutta goes on to say, what is that path? First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, and the uh, arupa jhanas, uh, the higher jhanas. So, from this Sutta, it is very clear uh, that it is impossible to become an anagamin without attaining jhana. Also, another Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya 52, uh, uh, it was explained, uh, I think Venerable Ananda was asked, uh, what did the Buddha say was needed uh, to win liberation, something like that, that means to become an Arahan, what is that one thing needed? And Venerable Ananda replied, the first jhana, and then the person asked Venerable Ananda again, did the Buddha say another thing that is needed to attain liberation? And Venerable Ananda said, yes, second jhana, and the third jhana, and the fourth jhana, and the higher jhanas. So you find, uh, to attain liberation and to attain anagamin, uh, jhana is needed. So I'll, somebody asked, requested me to summarize. Uh, uh, so I'd like to summarize here what I just said just now, that uh, Concentration is very important uh, to uh, for us uh, to get rid of the five hindrances so that we can see things very clearly with a very clear mind. And there are different levels of concentration. You can see three levels of concentration. The lowest one is momentary concentration, which is ordinary concentration uh, where you don't even need meditation. Uh, and that is just by paying proper attention, what is called Yoniso Manasikara in the Sutta. Huh? 
you pay proper attention or thorough attention, then uh, you can understand the Dhamma that you hear or you read. And that way you can become a Sotapanna. The medium level of concentration is by practicing some Samatha meditation uh, to the stage where you have not attained jhana, perfect concentration, but enough concentration uh, for you to reduce your sensual lust and ill will. And that is the way uh, 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 to become a Sakadagamin. If you study the suttas together with this type of meditation, uh, you can become a Sakadagamin, second stage Arya. But if you want to become an Anagamin, third stage Arya, or an Arahan, then you need perfect concentration uh, to uh, abandon the five hindrances. Uh, and you can become an Anagami or an Arahan. Now this seeing clearly, yeah, seeing clearly, to, to see clearly, you, as I said just now, you have to practice uh, Samatha meditation, which is Samatha means tranquilization of the mind. Practice tranquilization of the mind to see things clearly. Now to know things, eh, to know things, you have to, pre to, to practice vipassana meditation. Vipassana meditation, vipassana is translated as contemplation. Nowadays, some people translate it as, as insight, but that is not a good translation, not uh, a, a, it is actually a very misleading translation, because in the suttas, eh, in the Anguttara Nikaya, the Buddha said, if you practice vipassana, it leads you to insight. The result of practicing vipassana is insight. Uh, insight cannot be practiced. Insight is a result. How can you practice a result? You can only practice uh, vipassana meditation, contemplation, and the result is insight or wisdom. Now the Chinese translation is very accurate for these two words, samatha and vipassana. And we know that this Chinese translation was, was done about uh, more than a thousand years ago. And the tran Chinese translation is chir kuan. Chir is stilling of the mind. Stilling of the mind, tranquilization of the mind. That is accurate. Kuan is contemplation. Contemplation not insight. So, samatha is tranquilization, vipassana is contemplation. Now, these two things, eh? uh, there is one sutta in the Anguttara Nikaya 4.170, and that sutta was spoken by Venerable Ananda in his old age, after the Buddha had passed into Nibbana, Venerable Ananda was considered like the father of the Sangha. So, if the monks and nuns uh, had anything uh, to say to the leader, they would go and tell Venerable Ananda. And all the monks and nuns uh, who attained Arahanhood uh, came to tell Venerable Ananda. Previously, when the Buddha was alive, they would go and tell the Buddha. But now they went to tell Venerable Ananda. So in the Sutta, Venerable Ananda said, all the monks and nuns who attained Arahanhood uh, and came to inform him that they attained Arahanhood, uh, all said uh, that they attained Arahanhood in only four ways. In other words, Arahanhood can be attained only by these four ways of meditation, no other way. The first one, Venerable Ananda said, uh, was to practice Samatha first followed by Vipassana. Samatha first, followed by Vipassana. The second one uh, is to practice Vipassana, followed by Samatha. And normally people know the first one, but people don't know the second one. Uh, even if you've been practicing Vipassana, you still must practice Samatha, otherwise you cannot become an Arahan. So the second one is Vipassana, followed by Samatha. The third one is practicing samatha and vipassana at the same time. There are certain types of meditation uh, where you can do that, samatha and vipassana at the same time. The fourth one is a meditation on the self, 
to investigate who is this self. Now when you close your eyes, you ask yourself, who is this I? This I yeah, is very strong in all of us. It's because we have the feeling of that I, yeah, that you want to protect this I, this self. So when somebody wants to kill you, you don't let him simply kill you, yes or not? You fight to the extent of even killing him huh, to protect your life. Why? Because that, that feeling of that I is very strong within us. So when you close your eyes, you investigate, who is this I? Is it this body? Then you realize it's not this body, because if the body were to die and if you didn't have any body, still the mind is working and the self is still there. So you investigate, where is this self? Is it in my mind? So you keep on focusing on that self huh? and that will lead you huh, to one-pointedness of mind. And the Buddha says, uh, remember Ananda, uh, says that is the way huh, when you attain one-pointedness of mind, you will understand and see the way very clearly. Uh, in fact, one-pointedness of mind huh, is uh, a purification. Uh, some of you may know the seven stages of purification. You need purification of mind huh, before you can understand what is path, what is not path. Huh? <clears throat> so, uh, arhanhood huh, is obtained huh, in only these four ways. And by the way, the last one, huh, meditation of the self, huh, Nowadays, it's practiced in Zen Buddhism. You know, they practice, uh, wars, let's say, yes or not, who am I? Uh, that meditation, uh, a lot of people, uh, think, uh, that w is only peculiar to Zen Buddhism. That only in Mahayana Buddhism you have it. They don't know, uh, because they didn't study the suttas, that it originated from the Buddha himself. And that meditation has gone into yoga. It's gone to Jnana Yoga. Uh, that is quite a good meditation, but unfortunately it seems to be lost in Theravada Buddhism. Very few people in Theravada Buddhism uh, practice it because they don't even know that it was in Theravada Buddhism. So, if of these four ways, uh, you find uh, all these four ways to attain Arahanthood, you must have Samatha and Vipassana. You cannot do away with samatha or do away with vipassana. These two go hand in hand. Samatha is to clear the mind, make the mind very clear. And vipassana is to use the mind to contemplate so that wisdom arises. So these two, uh, 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 both are necessary. Now, the practice of vipassana is actually the practice of sati. Mm, later on, I'll explain uh, sati. Uh, and Sati is the seventh factor of the Aryan Eightfold Path. Huh? As you all know, huh? Sati is the seventh factor of the Aryan Eightfold Path, and that is the Vipassana practice. Now, if you practice Samatha, that will lead you to attain Samadhi. And Samadhi is the eighth factor of the Aryan Eightfold Path. So you can see, huh? the seventh factor and the eightfold, eighth factor are concerned with Samatha and Vipassana. That is why yeah, you cannot do away with any one of them. And both are needed because the Aryan Eightfold Path consists of eight factors and all eight factors are necessary. And unfortunately, nowadays, yeah, uh, some people think that Samadhi is not necessary. But in the suttas, the Buddha said, Samadhi Mago, Ask Samadhi Kum Mago. Samadhi is concentration. Mago is the path. Ah, Samadhi is no concentration. Kumago is the wrong path. So the Buddha is saying concentration is the path. No concentration is the wrong path. So it's very clear huh, that concentration is needed huh, for you to see things clearly and understand and know. And as I mentioned just now, huh, the two Majima Nikaya Suttas also explain very clearly eh, that jhana is necessary for attaining anagami and also for arahanhood. Now, um, so I'll summarize here again eh, uh, that the practice of samatha and vipassana both eh, are necessary 
it is if you practice samatha and vipassana it is equivalent to practicing sati and samadhi which are the seventh and the eighth factors of the aryan eightfold path so you know uh, that the aryan eightfold path has eight factors and every one of them is necessary yeah? and all eight factors pulling together will help you to get out of samsara uh, you cannot do with only one factor or two factors or even seven factors you have to do with all eight factors of the aryan eightfold path that is why sati and samadhi are necessary huh? now i like to explain what is sati now before i explain what is sati i like to tell you uh, that it is very very dangerous uh, to use a translation of a pali word and stick to that word uh, as the meaning of that word i give an example sanya sanya is a pali word uh, and sanya is one of the five aggregates the five khandas uh. now in the chinese uh, the five khandas is called wu yin uh, and sanya is translated in chinese as xiang which means thinking or thoughts now many years ago when i started to read buddhist books uh, and there were translations of buddhist books for the first time uh, in english uh, people used to translate sanya as labeling labeling putting a label and uh later they translated it as perception so you see the word sanya has three translations one is thinking one is labeling one is perception so if you stick to only one word you are confused because these three words have different meanings ah uh, so to understand the meaning of sanya you must go back to the suttas and see what the buddha said is the meaning of sanya and when you look into the suttas the buddha explains sanya as something like conception having a idea a view of something for example you think that this person is attractive but that is your perception uh, of that person as attractive another person uh, looking at uh, that man or that woman uh, might not find him or her so attractive uh, or your perception of somebody uh, being a very nice person but somebody else may not see that person as being a very nice person uh, and also the buddha said perception is formed from habit so because it is formed from habit it can be changed for example a man sees a, uh, is attracted by a woman's body and a woman is attracted by a man's body but if we practice the contemplation on the 32 parts of the body then we can see the body as repulsive and we are no longer attracted by the body so your perception uh, can change uh, that is the way to understand the meaning of the word sanya not by just one translation 